what's going to make you stand out and that's going to be a lot of the things that you guys teach inside the bodice program you know from from design and, and from the setup and more important most important the experience there and we are selective with who we will work with because if we don't feel that we can that our services can can do what we say they can do you know if you have a, a four two score i mean it's not the photos that are the problem man or the videos or anything it's it's the experience it's the management it's something else is wrong there hi i'm wyatt and i'm green and you're listening to our dad and your host of the vacation rental revolution podcast what's up guys welcome to another episode of the vacation rental revolution podcast i'm your host sean moore and this is our Friday interview day, our Friday episodes where we get to talk to other short-term rental investors, diving into this game, sharing the ups and downs of their journey, you know, and willing to really dive into some of the successes they've had, some of the challenges they've had, and everything in between. And today, we've got Mr. Josh Lehu joining us. So Josh, thanks for joining us, my man. Uh, Sean, thank you for having me, man. Excited to be here. Absolutely. Super excited. These are always my favorite episodes because I get to talk to other people in the game, rolling up their sleeves and getting to work and making things happen. And you've got, you know, there's going to be a lot of different things we're going to navigate and talk about um, as we as we talk about you navigating into the short term rental world. But and I've got a you know list of things I want to make sure we cover. But always at first, I always like to get the backstory, right? What? You know, where are you from? What does the family situation look like? What is your background as far as work history? And then why and how did we get into real estate investing and short-term rentals in particular? And then we'll go from there. Uh, my, my, my wife said to, uh, she said, uh, don't talk all day on this part. So, so we'll do the best. <laughs> well, I, like, um, I like the backstory. I love the backstory. I mean, so you can it, talk it, as long it, as you want. It's a story, it's a story man. Um, so uh, I was born in West Virginia. That's where most of my family's from. Um, my, my father was an electrician. We've started moving around a lot as he got different jobs and contracts, ended up in D.C., back to West Virginia, then in Philly for a long period of time. Uh, my parents had like a split, but didn't, un, didn't uh, but an unofficial split type thing. So my mother was down in South Carolina. My father was still in Philly. Um, I, I had some, uh, as a young man, I was, uh, you know, a little bit of a butthole. And so I went to a few different high schools, but I had some, I was good at athletics. So I got away with things for a period of time and then I didn't, you know, and I'd go to another school. And so I was Ended up back down here in South Carolina. Um, gra- I was a swimmer. Uh, graduated high school and 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 had the full ride dangled in front of me and went that path and um, hated it. I mean, the the work ethic wasn't there, man. I wanted to party, and meet girls. I didn't want to swim six days a week, five hours a day anymore. And uh, you know, I just ran as far away from that as I could, and then ended up working in the bar industry. Um, and I was in the bar industry for for the better part of about 15 years um, from there, I started at the bottom, you know, it was bouncer, bar back, bartender, manager. And then eventually I ended up owning a couple nightclubs. nightclubs. Uh, the whole time I was DJ, I started DJing in the late nineties, man. I sold those clubs off, ended up, you know, doing some work for the DOD. What a weird bounce, right? Um, still a touring, was still a touring DJ that I focused on that for a while and was only doing that. And like got some big regional tour circuits, some big national level tours. Um, during that period of time, I kind of fell into some media and broadcast work just cause you know, why not? And, uh, and then I've kind of also, I've always been kind of active and, and managed sort of managing the gym while I was doing the broadcast work and DJ and then open in a gym while I was doing the man, you know, the, 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 the media work and DJ and then somewhere around 2015, I was in front of a crowd of man of couple thousand people at this festival down in Tampa and did this scratch routine thing I did into Montel Jordan. This is how we do it. Right. And the crowd was young. No idea what the song was. And I'm just like, I'm too old to be up here, man. I don't need to be doing this anymore. And, uh, and slowly like, like stop booking my calendar told my manager. I was like, I just, this is not there anymore. I mean, the heart's not there. Like blah, blah, blah. Focus on the gym. I own really puts a lot of time and effort into that. Um, still was doing a lot of media broadcast work. And then, um, I've kind of fell into short term rentals, man. Um, you know, started staying in a lot in the early 2010s. My family had a, had a few and, and had two over time that we weren't really managing, but you know, we, we were got to use and, and got to be involved with in later phases of it. Sold those. Um, right around, my wife and I got married in 2019. Um, so I got married at the, the fresh age of 39. And, uh, and, you know, so I had a lot of time to do things before you know, to go enjoy the world before that. Um, and, um, went on our honeymoon in St. Thomas and we have found this, and I was, I was the guy that would spend hours on Verbo or Airbnb finding the, the, the perfect spot where we were private people. We like to be off the grid or not see other humans unless we want to. 
and we found a uh, this this one bedroom cottage over on a cliff in St. Thomas, and it was the most amazing experience ever. Well, of course, it was a honeymoon, but it was it was just the perfect Airbnb for us. And we were, while we were there, we're like, "What does this lady make?" And started like looking into it and seeing it. And we met her, and she basically moved from the mainland and had basically lived there, taking care of that unit. That's what she did for a living. Um, and, you know, there's a lot more to that than that, you know, but uh, but started kind of getting those wheels turning. And your marketing is amazing because not long after that and then our family sold our units, your ad started popping up. And then, um, you know, about a year later, pulled the trigger and here we are. So Here we are. I, I love that. You know, it's funny how I love the backstory because I always like to know somebody's background. Right. And it's always fun to know. And, and it you know, it explains a lot of some of the things we're going to talk about, you know, with what you do now with videography and all that stuff, like your background and some of that stuff. But it's it's funny how I would say 80 percent of the people that dive into short term rentals that I talk to, that is the story of one way or the other. They're on vacation. They start looking on you know, Realtor Zillow. They start looking at the how much they're paying and they start to do the numbers in their head thinking, hmm, there's some money to be made here. Right. Maybe there's something to this. And. And like you said, there's 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 more to the details as you dive in than just that, right? There's more to you know. There's a lot more expenses and a lot more things that you have to consider. But it's funny how that gets every like so many people's wheels spinning, you know. And when they're we, when they're actually we, on vacation really, and they're like, man, this is pretty fun. Maybe I could do this. When when we first found you and and the the education stuff that you offer, which is amazing, um, we were like, oh, we're thinking St. Thomas. That's where we're looking. And then we had a kid. And then the reality of when are we going to St. Thomas? You know, right. like when are we ever to get down there? You know what I mean? With 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 with, with a child and now children. Um, and so we brought that search into a lot smaller platform, a uh, small smaller you know I guess uh, travel range. And we're like, hey, we need to be this many hours away with with these small children. So yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And then you, you know, you were navigating the sale of a business as well, right? You started to was that was that before your guys' honeymoon where you started thinking, I might want to invest in this, or was that like, was that, was that after where you thought, okay, I've got some means to invest and I'm trying to find the right place for it. Or what, what was the timing of those two, those two events? So we, you know, I've primarily been self-employed since like 2001, give or take. I, I've worked some places here and there. Um, I've done a lot of gig work and that's kind of what I transferred into now, back into now. Um, when, uh, I owned a, a, a very successful gym for about nine and a half years. And when COVID hit, um, we, we live in South Carolina. Um, we're a red state and we were only shut down for a couple of weeks. Um, yeah. But during that period of time, man, you're just like, man, you know, you put so much effort and work into this and, and what we do, we help people, you know, we, we save people's lives. We, we get them, you know, back to being human again and, and not living on the couch and the changes we made to other people. And it just, it's just like washed away. So, but McDonald's can stay open and, and yeah. liquor stores are open and all the things that like cause the problem <laughs> are, are still going strong. Um, you know, it was just like, it, it was, it was, I won't say deflating, but the, the, but the, 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 the mind started to wander. And then when I finally pulled the trigger on, which was this past August, um, yeah, you know, a couple months prior to that, I spoke to two of my, I spoke to all my employees, but that, that essentially like the lease was coming due. I did, my heart wasn't in it for the three to five years. And, and you know, with either I wasn't going to resign or just someone want a really good deal on, on buying me out. And two of my employees, a uh, husband, wife, uh, retired military, um, they jumped on it, man. And we, we started working work in that process and navigating through everything. And it, it turned out well for everybody, I think. So, uh, ask me again in five years and I'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, and it's fun that they were able to kind of take it and, and run with it. Um, somebody that had, had put a lot of time in with you, I'm sure. And, yeah. um, you know, and then when you're start kind of saying, Hey, listen, this chapter, I'm ready to kind of close this chapter for a lot of those different reasons that you said. And, and then, but you also had that new chapter then that you were interested in looking at. And so it sounds like you kind of had a place that you wanted to go. Right. And, um, and it's interesting as you, as you, you know, because of all, well, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but you know, you're really navigating a new frontier in the short-term rental space on the marketing side with videography and really taking that, your, you know, your production experience and expertise and putting it into videography. And how are we going to navigate that new world of being able to market our properties and showcase them through video and drone footage and everything else. It's awesome. We're going to talk a lot about that. And 
So it sounds like that it was just a new, you know, a new place for you to put your focus, um, obviously expand on some of the expertise you already have, but into a new world of short-term rentals that really still got you more excited, right? Right. And the, the uh, you know, like, like I, I joked, I joked, it's like every 10 years or so, I, I find a new thing to go run off and chase, you know? Right. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. um, I had been in previously, I had, I had done a lot of work as a media director um, for, for major sporting events and uh, music festivals. So during the, the early 2010s, 2010s, um, you would typically have photographers and videographers. Right. And they, they were not the same. And as the technology increased, they started becoming the same. And so there's a lot of little high level guys out there. They've been doing it for a long time. Guys and girls uh, they've been doing it for a long time and, and they're able to do everything. They're able they're really high end photographers. They can do high end videography. They they do their amazing drone, you know, drone workers um, or pilots. And, and they they are all over the country, but they primarily work Friday, Saturday, Sundays for these events. Right. And yeah. these music festivals and, and sport events. Right. And if you're a short term rental operator, when would you like someone to come shoot your property? And it's typically much Sunday, week. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, yeah. right? And so we're able to get really good talent all over the country um, for a really <laughs> budget price. And, and I like to say I'm, I'm not a photographer or a videographer. I'm a, I'm a director. I'm a producer. I'm, I'm the manager, right? And I, I, facil- I put it together. I'm the salesman. I pitch it. I, I work it together. But we also look at, you know, we'll touch on it more later, but we look in the, like from a lot of what you've taught us. Um, we look at the data side. Does it make sense, right? Is yeah. Are you able, is the ROI here for us? If you're, you know, a one bedroom studio, you know, in an urban environment that's, that's gross and maybe, you know, twenty twenty five thousand dollars $25,000 a year, that's, that's great. You're probably doing very well, but is it, but bringing in a $5,000, $7,000 media package, the ROI is not going to be there, you know, unless it's going to bump you up to, to that, to a super tier that, that probably doesn't exist in that market, but also what works in your market, what doesn't work in your market. If you're in the mountains and everyone has a hot tub and everyone's shot is a hot tub, what can be done better with that shot? Or is there something that it's missing, right? That, right. that can make you be, because other, you know, if, if it's a cookie cutter, you know what I mean? Like a lot of those, you know, like, resort play type places, what's going to make you stand out? And that's going to be a lot of the things that you guys teach inside the Odyssey program, you know, from, from design and, and from the setup and more important, most important, the experience there. And we are selective with who we will work with because if we don't feel that we can, that our services can, can do what we say they can do. You know, if you have a, a four, two score, I mean, it's not the photos that are the problem, man, or the videos or anything. Yeah. It's, it's the experience, it's the management, it's something else is wrong there and we can't help you. You know what I mean? We can give yeah. you some advice, but I mean, there's other, there's other inherent fundamental issues that, that probably need to be touched on um, before, before going down that, 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 that path. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And, and this is, you know, this is, you know, you hit on a couple key points that I want to put an exclamation point on in one. The first one is really having, making data driven decisions, right? You know, when you say, are you going to spend five, seven, eight thousand dollars on a media package? There better be a return on that, right? And we have to be able to realistically look and see where is that return going to be, right? There, the the revenue potential in every market is different. The revenue potential for every house is different. And but if I say that to somebody, I just spent eight thousand dollars on a media package, and they're going to look at me and say, "You are crazy! I just got photos for five hundred dollars. You're you right. just lost seventy five hundred dollars." But I know that that. $8,000 investment is going to potentially get me a 15 or $20,000 bump in revenue annually. That's a pretty good return. Even if it was going to get me a $10,000 bump in revenue annually, I'm getting a hundred percent return on that investment. And but for years and not just one for year. Years, for exactly. Long. Over and over until maybe five years, I'm going to run with that for five years before I probably have to do an up- update. The flip side of that is what if, like you said, you're in a smaller market or you're already operating at a, at a high clip or there's just not that revenue potential to jump up and you're only going to get a thousand dollar jump? Well, maybe spending eight thousand dollars and getting a, it's an eight year payback on before you even make money. That might not be the right investment for you. But most people have no clue where to even find that information. First of all, that's why I always say. The numbers, understanding the numbers is always the very first step. And so many people talk about marketing and, you know, it's easy to talk to Josh and and five star guest book. And that's the name of Josh's company is five STR guest book. And, but it's, it's easy to talk about the marketing and all these beautiful photos and how we can articulate this experience and everything else. But you have to start with the numbers. You make almost every decision on acquisition, on setup, 
on investing in media packages, all these different things based on the revenue potential. And, and I'm glad that you brought that up because, and it's great that you guys are selective because you have the expertise to look at those numbers for somebody that even doesn't and be able to say, Hey, listen, you know, I think you're going to get a, a lift on this or there's other inherent problems, right? The best right. photos of a really crappy property or a property that's mismanaged that delivers a great, a, a really crappy experience. Photos aren't going to fix that. That's not going to fix your problem. And so we have to fix the inherent problem first. And so I think it's really important when you bring that up, but it's, that is one of the hardest things. It's, it's the third, you know, pillar of what we the foundational pillars that we believe is we've got to be able to stand out in crowds. We've got to be able to stand out in these really crowded marketplaces. The way to do that is to articulate our experience really, really well. And you guys do a good job. And I'm glad you mentioned that. Like you look at yourself as like more of a director, producer, not as just a videographer, just a photographer. It's like taking all that and bringing it together and understanding how to tell the story better than any, anybody else is doing and also accurately depicting what we have to offer. Yeah. We, you know, we have like with, with our, with our teams, like, you know, we come in there with a project in mind um, and, and, and rewinding that, like we initially on an intake, we, we, we look at the property, we look at, you know, the listing, we, we add, we want to know the, if it's been in service or, you know, gross annual revenue, you know, your average, your ADR occupancy, look at the market around it. Where are you performing at in the market? You know, as if I we don't I don't know every market, right? I don't know yeah. that a, a property in Orlando that's in one of those mega resorts, you know, it's nine bedrooms, and I'm like, are you doing well for the other nine bedrooms? Let's go look. Let's go see what's yeah. going on in the market. Where's your what is your what does your market allow? Um, does it allow you to jump up to to the next level? Does your current listing and et cetera? And we I mean we also fell into the point of like uh, and I think we, you know, I talked with this with you and Dave and or ironically Orlando before, like, you know, we started doing inspections when we were on site because we started arriving on some properties that were just disgusting. You know what I mean? I'm like, the windows are dirty. We can't shoot this house. You know, the landscaping's dead. Um, you know what I mean? Like we can take, I mean, okay, we'll do the best we can, but like, like there's, there's only so much editing we can do if everything's, you know, if you're like your prop, every property I see is green and you're just a brown square where your sprinklers yeah. haven't been turned on as your PM hadn't ran them in forever. Um, and, and whatever. So we want to look at it from the side too. that we, you know, that like, Hey, on the, on the front end, what do we feel is, is going on? You know what I mean? That we can possibly help you. And, and, you know, we deal with, we, we primarily work a lot with self managers, um, or smaller boutique, you know, groups, you know, to be a co-host or set up or something like that. Um, with the larger PMs, especially the legacy PMs, they, they don't really, could, they could care less what we say or offer or do. You know, they're like, we're not going to provide sheets for our beds unless you pay extra for it. Um, right. Everyone gets the same three hundred dollars photo package, and it's done this way. That's the way it's going to be. And like, it's like, hey, if we came in, if you're like, hey, you know, Sean owns one of one hundred properties in this guy's portfolio, and Sean wants to put in, you know, this big media package for this massive property, and it's, it's just all oh, like ten thousand dollars or whatever, blah, blah blah. And we're like, and we do it, and Sean's property destroys the other ninety nine. The other ninety nine owners are not happy. Right. Right. They're like, well, why, why am I not getting what he's getting? Well, cause Sean paid, you know, Sean put the work in and, and, and did it, you know, and a lot of, so from that type of sense, we're not much loved um, from some of those bigger PMs. And uh, you know, but when we, when we work with the, when we work with their, with their clients and that client outperforms, I will say we have seen often, not because of anything we say or do, we've seen a lot of times that that, that, that person starts to look, elsewhere as they start seeing from the higher end now like they look start looking down like oh oh i've been missing out on this for a long time right right yeah and it, yeah it opens their eyes to the the revenue potential that they missed out on like you said for sometimes years and they're like man i left a lot of money on the table by not yeah, doing and, that right and, everyone, and by, everyone's, everyone's goals are different you know what i mean yeah. and and you know what where they want to be with the property and, and what they want to do with it and, and you know if you like you know you want to pull the passive income and and you're happy with it then be happy you know what I mean? The, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Um, you know, but, and so that's why I think that intake part and in really assessing the full picture, the best that we can from a 30,000 foot view and then getting really micro with it, you know, and kind of having that full, the full parameters of what's going on and not just like, I want this done. I'm like, we understand, let's see what it could take. Does it make sense? Et cetera. You know, um, and I think that's a, a big piece there when we look at our space that we do with, with multimedia, you know, development and production, you know, we've got we started 
doing a lot of resort work and a lot of my teams work for Royal Caribbean, Hilton and stuff like that. That's a different, it's a different branding animal, but what they do is a reason why that they're the best in the world at, at what they promote and do. And we can learn from that, you know, and, yeah. and we can see what brings into this space a little bit differently. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you guys are doing. Those of you can go check it out that are listening. It's five str And uh, those links are always in the show notes. Go check out some of the examples of these properties and is your property on there on your on your website? Uh, yeah, yeah, so we we, yeah. Uh, we we shot we we as I said with resorts, man. We uh yeah. we we just bought in Hilton Head and the the current the new management of the H of the resort the resort we're in. It's a four hundred and fifty maybe it's like four hundred sixty three two and three bedroom units Hilton Head Resort. It's been around since the eighties and they had previously until about two years ago a uh, a, a more of a legacy style management company that was running the place in the ground. Um, we actually were looking there and then stopped because of that management company. New management came in. Um, we, we, they brought us back. A lot of that management was the reason why we came back because they, they care. You know what I mean? The, the, yeah. the, the current GM owns three units there. He wants the place to succeed. So we, the, their, their media sucks. You know what I mean? And it was like, hey, I want to shoot my unit. Can I do the entire HOA stuff? What can we work together on this for a resort? Because, you know, a rising tide, a rising tide raises all ships. If we all have better marketing assets, we can all charge more money. We can all have a better, you know, guest clientele, you know, whatever, et cetera. Um, and so we came in and did the resort and then we did my unit over there and kind of like piggybacked off that. So I was able to able to uh, get my team up there for free, essentially. So it worked out. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that's, and that's good. And, and so let's talk about because you have. You have also navigated on your purchase. Uh, you you were able to talk. You know, just we'll talk about navigating and how it came about and how you negotiated it. But seller financing and owner financing and creative financing of being able to take this property over. We talked about it a, a lot when you were going through that process. But let's right. navigate into the acquisition and how that all turned out and worked out for you as well. So we, you know, uh, I'm a swimmer. I want water. You know what I mean? Whether it be a mountain, whether it be a stream, a lake, you know, a mountain lake, a stream, a river, an ocean, man, I just, I need water. Maybe we have a pool in our house for that reason. You know, before we had the pool house, we had a boat. We live on a lake for that reason. You know, I got, I need water. Um, so that was a priority for us. We've been looking in Hilton Head and, and, and this, and, you know, and the, the Palmetto, you know, South Carolina's coast for a while, lived in the North, North Georgia and Southern North Carolina. Um, and Hilton Head's property insurance kind of skyrocketed. The acquisition price had kind of gone through the roof, um, uh, especially post COVID. Um, the, after talking to a lot of property managers and co's that we didn't plan to self manage, it just didn't work, man. We kind of stopped looking at Hilton Head, to be honest. And we started to transition more towards, more towards uh, Murphy, North Carolina area, more into the you know, northern North Georgia mountain area. Um, and then my agent down in that area, we, I'll rewind that a little bit. So we had, we had gone, we had found a property in Fripp Island we really, really liked. And I'd spoke to you um, a couple of weeks, even maybe a month or two prior about, you know, just, just, we had, you know, everyone has a unique situation, but, you know, we have a second home that, um, that we're, that we're, it's on our DTI, but we don't, it's on an, it's on an income producing home. Um, and, and I'm self-employed and now I just sold a business. So I'm in the eyes of Freddie and Fanny, I'm about as use as useless as can be. Yeah. And, uh, at least another year and a half or so, but, um, anyway, so, uh, we were going to go a DSCR route, but the, the rates were so high. We had a lot of cash and the rates were so high. It was, I mean, we're going to be stuck in this with, with more than likely with an election year coming up, seeing some kind of downward pressure on rates. And we're not going to be able to get out of that step, you know, five, four, three, two, one, you know, payoff rate or, you know, refinance rate uh, penalty without eating another big chunk of money. And right. you'd brought up, you'd brought up two names to me. Um, you had brought up Pace Morby and William Tingle to me. Yeah. Um, and I told them both, I think, and I, I knew who Pace Morby was. I think everyone knows who Pace Morby is. And I reached out to them first because he's the one with all the glitz and glamour. And what I really wanted when we found this property on this Fripp Island, I mean, was we found an owner who was, who was open-minded to, to some things we had, we had talked about. And I wanted, I wanted, honestly, what I wanted was a broker. I wanted someone who could kind of come in, I could pay and almost be like my sub two real estate agent, you know, right. or, or whatever. Right. They don't exist, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, and so, so the, the, the more praise more me stuff is more of like a coaching program. It just really wasn't what we were looking to do. I, it's not what I wanted to do full time. Um, but uh, William Tingle, even though he doesn't, really, that's not what he does. It really isn't vacation rentals. The foundation is is sound. And if you can, you know, if you can, if you can solve three X equals 27, any single variable equation, 
we can solve. I'm, I'm a math guy. And uh, so, you know, like we, we, we wanted, so his stuff, I think, I think I read, looked at his stuff and it was like a black Friday deal. My course is half off or something. I'm like, Oh, go on and get it. So it didn't actually hunt. There we go. Has there you go. Right there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and I bought it, read through it over like a weekend, man. And I like, had a better understanding of, of, of just kind of how to have that conversation and, and like things I didn't know and you don't, don't know what you don't know type thing and reach out to those owners. We love that property. We it had been in the market for over 565 days, right? And that there's some red flags there, right? Um, and so they were very open-minded to, to unload it. As, as we started kind of working through everything, some more red flags started popping up on Fripp Island. And uh, my wife is a wonderful sleuth and found through just Google searches and, and their voting records, which were public, that they, that they put their primary house up for sale the same, almost the same day as they put up this for sale house and they have two different Fordham addresses. It's, it's a divorce. And it was a very, yeah. and on Facebook, one of the, one of the profiles wasn't private and uh, it was a very contentious and very public divorce. And so we were like, we're, we're going to, we're going to back out of this. Um, and so we, we left that. And again, kind of give up on Hilton head, my agent in that area um, messaged me with the, we had, we had a few criteria. We want something that had been on the market for longer than 45 days. Right. And in the time of year we bought in January, we, we wanted to see it sitting sometime like August or September forward. And the reason being in that market, especially with the units, the type of units we were looking at, um, at the end of peak season, a lot of people unload and not a lot, not like, you know, 20 percent. But, but the inventory goes up enough to drive prices down for the specific units. It shouldn't happen that way, but it does. And so the unit had been sitting for a while. It had been sitting for 45 days, had dr- just recently dropped ten thousand dollars. Um, so we, we ended up buying at 339, but it dropped down to 339. Um, and I wanted to, and I wanted to have, uh, I want to have an owner who was motivated not, not motivated, like in a bad way, but like, Hey, you know, like I want to reposition for this guy. He lived in Vermont, um, or was retired, I think, and like owned the place all out. I've been there for many years and just look, was looking to, you know, move something closer to home and stop traveling to South Carolina so much. Um, and so we initially, we, we started to talk, started having the communication through a real estate agent. It was an inner broker, inner broker deal. And I just brought up like, Hey, what about, you know, would he be interested in owner financing? Um, and this could be, you know, he could make a lot. I know what he wants to get financially. I know where he started at with his listing and he's got to be pretty dejected after yeah. all the times he's had to bring it down. And, and he's obviously taking care of the property. Um, you know, we, we wanted to see the previous listings, not to try to take the listings over or anything like that, but I want to see people talk about how clean it is, how meticulous, the owner maintained everything because then I know it's going to be a lot less deferred maintenance when we get on site, right? Like this, like, Hey, and this guy was super OCD about keeping everything super clean. Everything is brand, brand, brand new. Um, and we ended up, you know, like long story short, we ended up talking, talking through the agents. Everyone kind of agreed. We ended up getting a, a three year, um, three year deal with him, uh, 6% with 15% down. Um, and for us, we had the cash and what the cash wasn't the issue. We also didn't want to get in a position to where we put 10% down or worked out a 5% deal and the market goes haywire or rates skyrocket or property values drop. And then we still need more cash to put down. And, you know what I mean? And, and now yeah. we're essentially like negative in, in the property. So the deal worked out well. We closed and uh, we, from, from the time I saw the listing to closing, it was 20 days on the dot. Um, so we, we moved, we moved fast on it and got, got in there, man. And it, it was, uh, it was a good experience for, for it was all thanks to, you know, the education you turned us on to, you know, so thank you. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. And, and I've had William on the podcast, uh, probably, yeah, I've, probably I've, like I've, 50 I've, episodes yeah. deep, right. But it was, uh, yeah. he's been on the podcast pace is scheduled next month to be on the podcast. And so he's those guys, you know, it, it's the, the key is, like it's something you've never done, right? And when you've never bought a property subject to or owner financing of any sort, then you just don't know what you don't know. You don't know how to do it. And and there's resources out there to show you that it's not rocket science. It's not, this happens all day, every day. Uh, there's a lot of people that can show you how to do it and you know, cross the T's, dot the I's. Um, and then you go start having these conversations and it gives you the confidence to have the conversation, right? Even on some of our coaching calls, when you were navigating that, we, we'd banter back and forth about, Hey, what about this? I'm going to talk to him about that, you know, cause it's nice to be able to just talk to somebody and people who have actually done owner financing, created deals like that. And, and at the end of the day, like you said, you bought a property that was meticulously maintained. It wasn't a distressed property. It was a, dis- a seller that was a little bit overpriced 
going into a market that was going to have a flood of inventory because of the season and probably going to have to be a little bit more aggressive on his price and getting a little bit tired and just saying, I want to move on. And you start to have those conversations with him and you get a good property, a seller that's, that is, you know, it's not like it was, you're buying a foreclosure and all of a sudden they're willing to work with you and you get a 6% financing when, you know, you go try to get a DSCR loan right now and it's eight or 9%, right? And it's, and you got a three-year term, you got 15% down, everything works out really well. And it puts you in a position as well at a lower interest rate, especially on those first 12 to 18 months of a short term rental, which that's going to be your lowest, you know, your income is going to be a little bit lower than until you stabilize and maximize these properties. It gives you an opportunity to cash flow and pay the bills on, right? And, and, and a better opportunity versus the lending environment. And I, I think that it's really important, a key point that you made really early on was in the eyes of the banks, you're not that lendable, right? You're a, you're self-employed. You just sold your business. So they're thinking you're unemployed, right? right? You, you just sold your business. And you, you know, even though you've got some capital to put down, you got great credit and everything else, they don't want to, they don't want to lend to you. And it's crazy. And so you have to be, you have to figure out what are, what are our other options that we can look at? And you start navigating that where so many people, Josh, will just say, well, I got to wait two years till I file taxes on this new business for a couple of years and then I'll do it. You know, you don't have to, you can, there's ways to find, figure out how to do it. And one of the ways that you got into it was figuring out, Hey, I don't want to pay those big prepayment penalties when I have to refinance this DSCR when rates do drop, because I believe they're going to drop in the next, you know, short period. And they don't, and, and when, when I don't want to pay a 5% penalty to refinance. So if I'm planning on that, I'm going to avoid that option. So what are my other options? And you went and found one that worked really well for you and the seller. And I think that's important to know that it's not, it didn't just work out well for you. The seller was just as happy with that deal as you were. That, that's the way we, we've, we've, we always led our conversations with, with that was like, um, when I worked in the bar industry, it was very cutthroat. A lot of bad things happened after midnight, man, drugs, alcohol, infidelity, violence, you know what I mean? And you're just in that scene all the time. And then when I got into the, the gym I was owning, it was a very community driven man and everyone loved when I met my wife there. Right. Um, and I love those people. Right. Um, and, and it was a CrossFit gym, but in that, and you know, of what you think about that. Um, but I could walk into any gym, any CrossFit gym around the world. And I, I've worked for CrossFit HQ for many years. I got to travel all over the, all over the world doing all kinds of media stuff for CrossFit, um, and, you know, broadcast work for them. Awesome experience. But I could walk in any one. I've been to you know 100 plus gyms across the world for this company, and I could walk into any one of those gyms. I could be 500 pounds overweight. I could have never worked out before. I could be a high level athlete. I could be a gym owner. I could be the. I could be your competitor next door, and every one of those places will walk up and shake your hand and say, "How can I help you today?" Right? And I love that mentality. It made me feel better about myself. And so with this world. The real estate world is a little, you know, it can be a little more cutthroat too. I'm like, I've done this before. And, uh, but it's also like, Hey man, I feel better at the end of the day when both sides win, you know, um, yeah. I feel better about myself. I feel better about what's going on. I don't want to, the person we bought the property from, I don't want to put him in a bad position. Right. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's my soul at the end of the day. Right. And I don't want to do that to someone. So like the, the way we approached it was like, Hey, where's, there's something we can both win. Here's, a, here's how much money you'll make on interest. If we go the full three years. Here's 50% cash, you know, and how that's going to work for you and, and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, and, and for him, he, he cared about that place deeply and he didn't want to just sell it to someone who's going to run into the ground or, you know, trash it or whatever. Um, yeah. He wanted someone that was going to take care of it. Remember, you know, whatever happens after the sale is what happens. But, but you know, but in general, like, you know, we, we want each other to be happy at the end of the day and we still text from time to time. You know, yeah. and how many people do you still do that with? You know, the, regardless of me paying him a mortgage show, but like, how many times you just text the guy you bought a house from you never really met before? I'm like, hey, man, you know, beautiful. Yeah. You love this. Oh, how'd you like this? You know, it's, 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 it feels good to do business that way. Um, that's the way we try to do things in, in our general day to day lives. Yeah, it's, it's funny you bring that up too and how important that is to a seller. And I've seen it both from the buyer side and the seller side of wanting to sell to somebody that cares about this property as much as I did. And they're going to enjoy it as much as I did. I remember one time, um, just recently, two houses ago that we sold, um, not the most recent, but the one right before that, is we sold to a couple that their offer was $15,000 less than our other offer. Yeah. 
but we felt like they loved the house more than the other people. And they were going to like make it their own and like kind of carry on the, like we're going to hand them the baton and they're going to run forward. Right. And, uh, and that was important to us as sellers, Teresa and I, when we talked about, we're like, this is who we want. It, this is who we want to enjoy the house. And it wasn't always about the dollars and cents. It was about, you know, making sure that they, and that's why I always lead in every negotiation with how much I love the property. Obviously if I'm making an offer on a property, I like it. Right. So, you know, so many people, lead in negotiations with all the things wrong with something. It's like, well, I can't, I mean, it's got, it needs a new roof. It needs a new this, it needs a new that. We're going to have to remodel this. It needs a new kitchen. And they think that that's going to set them up to negotiate a better price. Right. And, and I don't believe that. I think that you, that sellers want to hear that you love it. Right. They, that's important to them. And they're, you're more willing to have a conversation and negotiate when they're comfortable with that. You actually like this. And there are things that you might have to fix and that you want to do it and you want to take that baton and you want to run down the road further than they did. And, and that's important. And, and yeah, it's the same conversation that you guys had. It sounds like on that deal. I mean, it's psychology, man. Someone comes at you immediately yeah. with everything you do wrong. You're like, well, I'm defensive. I don't like you. You know what I mean? And exactly. Like, it's like, and now, now we're in negotiation mode and we're angry. You know what I mean? It's just yep. aggressive and it's versus just like a better way to, I mean, I don't know if I've ever walked up to someone and slapped them to say hello and meet them for the first time. Right. right. That's kind of what it sounds like, right. It's like your house sucks for these reasons. I don't right. buy it from, you know, and you're like, man, I, I don't like this, this way this conversation is going. So like, you know, he had other offers on the table and, and he went with us. So, you know, like it, it worked out. We, um, we had actually, we, we found it, taught him a little bit. We had a little bit of negotiation back and forth of what he wanted was he wanted like a two year deal at 25% down on my, there's no value in that to me, man, whatsoever. Um, we wanted a five-year deal at, you know, for 20%. We said, we, we, I, we're happy with what we did. But at one point, he was like, well, I want this. I'm like, that was kind of my final offer, man. I'm sorry. We just were kind of like, we're just kind of, we weren't even looking to Hilton Head anymore. And, you yeah. know, best of luck to you, blah, blah. That was a Friday, Monday morning, you know, 9.01 a.m., message from the realtor, hey, he, he accepts. I'm like, cool, let's go. Good. So, yeah, that's and then, awesome. And, then, and, that, and that's the next year, which is the fun part, right? The setup. Yeah. The setup, that, that's the thing. Then, then you roll into where the real work starts, right? Are you right in the middle of that? Have we launched, you, oh, no, you've right. launched your property, you're past we, that, right? We had, we had some fun, man. So uh, yeah. we bought on January 24th um, for, a lot, for a lot of February. Yeah. I had uh, uh, the national conference and you know, I saw you guys at, um, I had a couple of jobs I was traveling for. And so we knew most of February was gonna be a wash. We got to go as a family. I've got a, a three-year-old and two 11-month-old twins. We brought both, we brought, you know, grandmother down with us each time we would go just for, just so we wouldn't be outnumbered and stop having yeah. to run cover, you know, <laughs> no more man to man and, and no, you know, yeah. man coverage, right? And um, so, uh, but uh, I knew February was going to be a wash, but we had the property and we got, we were hoping to launch in March for all the spring breaks to come down there to Hilton Head. And it just, I'm a very OCD perfectionist and there were just little things that I wanted to change. And so we ended up launching April 1st. The unit was initially very, very blue. Everything was blue. Like the walls are blue. The furniture was blue. Everything was blue. We wanted to go white. I don't paint, not a skill set of mine, you know, like, and, and boy, I learned some lessons. Um, so we, we, we were shutting down. We had planned to shut run for April then shut down for like two weeks in May. And we'll, you know, right at the end of April, early made that lull between spring breaks and, and, and summer starting. I'll take about a week and a half, two weeks. It didn't. Um, so we, we learned, we learned that an 800 and, 40, 51 square foot condo. I was like, it cost about five grand to paint it, to take it from blue to white. No, it was about $10,000. And then like, it's not going to be a three day process. It's going to be, we have to paint it three to four times to kill this blue off, to make sure it doesn't show up again. The previous blue was over a really thick green and there's a lot of other, and they had glued everything to the walls. So when we started to pull it off without the solvent, it was tearing the tape, had to patch the walls. And it was, anyway, it, it turned into a process. And anyway, we, we launched fully after everything done May 12th. A few little snafus there. We had a sectional couch that came in in two boxes. I didn't open it. I drove it down there, loaded it in myself. The very last thing I was doing one of the days I was there was, was putting the couch together. One couch was gray as it was supposed to be. Other side of the couch was blue. Oh. They said they're on, they're on the wrong couch. Um, so we, we, my first guest came in on May 12th. I was on you know, on the phone. That was like probably like May 7th or 8th. I was on the phone with, with, the, with the furniture company like, you know, like, well, we can get to you in two weeks. I'm like, oh, you're, you're getting to me next week. You know what I mean? And so I drove back down there, met the furniture delivery guys while the guests were there, gave them like a gift card to the, to the, to the bar on site. And I was like, I'll be out of there in 30 minutes. And we, we swapped the couch out, cleaned everything up, got back out, 
they, the, the guests came back up to a brand new couch. You know, and so we had a, that, that, that was our, that was a sort of a launch, but since then, man, rates have been great. We've, uh, we followed, you know, your, what Bodicey teaches in, in the launch and, and how to get that momentum going. Such a great lesson. And we just, I mean, like we're already 20% higher, um, with our rates. We had planned to be this, this first summer and people just keep booking at these rates and we just keep pushing them up and they keep, we, we, I mean, we, we literally do not have, we do not have a single day that's open until August 8th. Um, wow. and the, congrats. It's, it's, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's your, it's your, your lessons, man. They work. Yeah. Thank you. Well, yeah, I appreciate you saying that, but it's, it's you guys taking action and putting it into work and executing all of it. So it's uh, congrats on that. It's really fun to see the fruits of your labor, right? Because, you know, all those negotiate negotiations with sellers, looking at different markets, getting that set up, you know, property set up, maybe missing our, our, your ideal launch dates and missing some of that time, but knowing that we're waiting to get it right. And then you start to see, okay, there's some, there's some payoff by doing that and, and really having a successful launch and, so congrats on that. That's really fun. And it's, it's exciting to see. And, and especially where you're pushing the rates too, 20% above where you we, thought you'd be for this season, which is awesome. Yeah, we, we underwrote, I mean, conservatively, I mean, as you should, the occupancy there on that island's high. Um, the occupancy in the, in the complex is very high. We underwrote way lower than we underwrote low, low rates for what we wanted to do there. Um, and the, the lead times, the bookings were coming in too soon. And we, we had them stapled out past a certain window yeah. to go higher and they just kept booking. It was like, well, I need to push those rates higher. I need to push them higher. I need to push them higher and bring that lead time, you know, the booking window back down. And, and I think just like you said, momentum, and then just the way we worded the property, put the photos in the order we had them. And especially once we had the new photos done um, of the new property and we had the video assets um, and, and putting everything together there for the show factors that no one else in that complex has, you know, um, you know, we're, we're, we are, our July 4th week, which is, you know, our highest rate we pulled, we're, I mean, there might be one other property in that entire complex that had a higher rate book than us. And not that we had planned for that. It's just, I was trying to keep that week open until we got closer to the windows. I raised the rates a lot higher and it booked. And I'm like, oh, okay. Hey, we'll take it, it right? No, it's good. I mean, no and, and that's the thing. I mean, there's people always say what, you know, they're looking for this one silver bullet or what, what's the one thing you did, Josh, to, to get that better than all the other um, condos in the complex. Now, because when you're in a complex like you. that, yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's a, that's a, that, that, I'll, I'll just end the show right there. That's the explanation. Go, right? but, <laughs> but it is, it's a it's a hundred golden BBs. It's taking the action and executing on all those different things that allow us to stand out in this in these markets, right? And allow us to, in a complex where there's a lot of similar properties, you know, when it's just amenities and properties, they're a lot very similar. However, all those things that you did and all those things you've implemented, taken action on, are what differentiates you and give the guest a better and a, a compelling reason to book you above and beyond everybody else's and pay you more than what other people are charging, which is awesome. You know, I love to see it. I love to hear those stories. I was like honing in on our guest type. You know, who, who do we yep. want? And who, who are we going to target them? And literally out of, you know, we, we probably between when we first launched and then to where we are now with bookings, maybe like. 18 bookings, 17 bookings, something like that, just, just with, you know, some shorter windows. We, I mean, you know, it, it, it was nice. We filled out like the Monday through Wednesday blocks. Like, you know, they just, they filled in, but they've been fine. We, we targeted us. We targeted active families, right? They don't mind doing the work. Um, the small children and small children primarily being, you know, like seven, eight and under, you know what I mean? Yeah. My oldest is three. Um, and that's how, who we've gotten. We offer like, Hey, if you have an infant, we'll give you a, a brand new bottle brush. You can have a, you can use a sterilizer and drying rack and we'll have our cleaners leave it out for you. It's, you know, when we travel with twins, I mean, it just takes up car space and we need exactly. to we have a, exactly. We have a storage unit under one of the buildings that has like beef supplies, you know, wagon chairs. You know, we, I'm not like, we wrote that into underwriting. I'm probably going to replace that entire thing every single year. And right. if it survives, awesome. And if it doesn't, what it's just put our underwriting. And most, and even though the, a lot of those units have access to those sheds, that's for the owners. They don't let the guests use them. They don't right? use them. So yeah. now, now, now I don't have to worry about like we have a uh, our so we're beachfront, but it's like the beachfront is like there's a mark. We we own the the complex marsh beach, right? So it's like about a three, from the from the, the length of the boardwalk is like 300 meters. Beautiful. Beautiful. At the end of the boardwalk is this world famous tiki bar called Coco's. That's part of the part of the regime as well. But like that boardwalk, man. If you're like an older individual, or like you know, they have a shuttle service. But like you know, if you're trying to like, 
I literally strapped the wagon with bungee cords to me, you know, and carry one kid and we have a stroller with the other two, you know, and that's how we get to the beach back and forth. But if you're not willing to do that work, you don't have that wagon, like your beach experience isn't going to be very fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Now you're toting all this stuff down in the car or, or you're flying in and renting it. Um, so noticing who the guests were and how to, how to sell them and how to, and that's who, that's who our guests have been for the most part. We haven't had like any one that wasn't that guest, or at least the, every, everyone that's came has had kids, you know, in some capacity yeah. or not. Um, and then setting yeah. the rooms up for that and the experience up for that, making it as simple as possible for those families to operate for us. We, we need floor space. When we first got in that unit, there's no floor space. Um, so we opened it up, you know, we, we, we brought everything back. The table's super movable, you know, everything can be moved so we can have kids on the floor and we, we like the floor too. So when we, you know, carpeted it as we needed to and it worked out well. So, so That's far so awesome. good. And, it, and it's such a good, it's such a great explanation of why I always say you should be part of your target audience, because if you are part of your target audience and you speak the language of that audience that you're going out and trying to attract, you're going to create an amazing experience and think of the things that, you know, you know, I don't, I forgot about the bottle ster sterilizers and the brushes and everything else. But I remember when my kids were young traveling, I'm like, holy crap, we have to bring so much stuff. Right. And when you can think ahead and, and alleviate that for somebody that's traveling, they're like, Oh, thank you. Thank you for thinking about that. Right. It's something little, but it's because you're in that world. You understand their world. And, and we are all a part of multiple target audiences because we all like different things and we do different things. We're different stages of life and you can navigate multiple different target audiences. But when you can go in and create that experience, but it's a lot easier if you are part of the target audience. And it's a great example of that. So that that's awesome. And so another thing you stress on real quick is uh, is boots on the ground. You know, we, yes. we self-manage and we found the cleaner that works for the GM of the, uh, of the complex that goes through the units. And she is meticulous and she has been like a lifesaver. I mean, like without her, I, we live three hours, two and a half, three hours away. I mean, you know, without her, Oh man, like, you know, I forgot to leave the sterilizer out, you know, I forgot to tell you. And she lives like close. So she can just run yeah. by and do it. I'll pay her 20 bucks or whatever, run over and do it. Um, when my main guy, when we were finishing up the, finishing up the setup, he came down with strep the day we were leaving. And so I had no help. And so I, I literally, I call her, I'm like, what would it take? to like put you to work, like bad work for like the next three days straight. And she, her and her friend came in and I paid them. I'm like, they gave me a number and I'm like, well, I'm going to double that number because I could not have done this without you. And this unit's operational because of you. And, and so like, you know, she's, she's definitely getting a Christmas bonus this year too. So I mean, like, like that's awesome. developing those relationships with whoever they may be and, and making sure they're going to fit what you need. That's been the key to, to key to success this far. And boots on the ground, they're the, the right partners. They're worth their weight in gold. And you're, you're exactly right. So um, on this, you know, you know, at the end of every episode, maybe you do, maybe you don't, I think you do. Um, you know, you know, I have one question for you, right? As we start to wrap up, there are so many lessons learned in every one of these conversations. We, we navigated a lot of different avenues today throughout that process and seller financing and setup and everything else. And, and really we, t we started off talking about what, you, you know, your, your key business right now with five, five star um, guest book with, and it's five STR guest book. Those of you looking it up and the importance of being able to articulate the experience and, you know, all this, all this has been a lesson, right? But if you go back to your younger self and you had to give yourself a lesson in, maybe it's in short-term rentals, maybe it's just in, you know, investing in general and what you're doing in life, but what, you know, is there a piece of advice or is there something you want to share with everybody? Cause I would, you know, our goal is always to help people walk into this game with their eyes wide open. And, and part of that is just learning from other people and, sometimes the easiest is what would we tell ourselves to do differently if we dove into it today versus when we did? So we, uh, I, I think it, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to try to fluff you up too much, but I think I've watched your, your old uh, intro video that your, your ads had. There's really long, like 40 minutes or 50 minutes or something. I've watched it like five or six times. Um, yeah. and, and I was like, you know, I just, I just, you know, too many scammers out there. I mean, I'm just not interested. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, you know, in, in hindsight, when we still had the family units and everything with that and, and had different phases, I, I would have loved to pull that trigger earlier because within like the first 10 minutes of, of being part of the program and, and looking at all those offers, like, man, we wasted a lot of time trying to learn everything when so much of it is consolidated right here. You know what I mean? And like, and like you know, Google can't do everything for you. So, you know, but, right. but maybe Sean can't. 
Yeah, maybe Sean can. Well, I appreciate you saying that. You know, I'm always, I always just kind of have to pinch myself once a week and just say, man, I can't believe this is what I get to do. This is the people I get to surround myself with. And so I'm every bit as grateful for the community and, and that we've got. And, and like, even like with you and Steve with, you know, now you guys are contributing in the community and helping all, you know, all those, you know, a group of self managers, cause I don't self manage. And so we get together. And so you're giving back every bit as much. And so I appreciate you saying that. And, and I think you're living the example of saying, Hey, listen, I I can give back as well too and and i very very much appreciate that as well and giving back and having these conversations on the podcast it means a lot to me and so thank you for joining and thanks for you know for sharing all that and, and being a part of what we think is the best thing out there which is our Odyssey family man thank you so much for having me on here and thanks so much for giving us the opportunity with the self-management call we had a blast with it excited for the next one next week man um, i'll be able Heck to yeah, man. that so we'll cool. be doing it live from captiva island so let's love go. it love it you better, better better show all those people on zoom the the they better see some blue waters right some turquoise oh, yeah, waters yeah, out yeah, there yeah. so crystal clear man it's beautiful. crystal clear out there awesome it's man well listen josh i appreciate it those of you that are listening we know how valuable your time is and we always appreciate you spending it with us. You guys know I don't run ads. I don't do promotions. We don't want people telling us what we can and can't talk about. And so we're just on our own here. The only way that this show is going to get, you know, in the hands of people that want to dive into the short-term rental game is if you guys share it. And so I do ask you that favor at the end of every show is to share the show for with to those people that might be considering short-term rentals, investing in into this game that is already in this game that might want to learn some different t- tactics and tips and listen to people like Josh and their journey and the lessons they learn along it. And then you guys know, if you have more than 30 seconds, I always ask you to like and share or, or review these, these shows. The, the reviews do help. People love seeing third party, you know, reviews on these shows. So if you have more than 30 seconds, those things help us and I do appreciate it. And the final and most important thing that I ask at the end of every episode, and it is the most important thing is to go pick that one thing you can do today. Start building that life you don't want to take a vacation from. Cheers, my friends. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. Share this with other people you think need to hear about it. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. Hey Grace, is there a website? Yes! For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicey.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you on the next episode.